How did I get into acting? Um, I think initially in school, um, I don't know whether it was a way for my mum and dad to like get rid of me for a few hours, um, but they would stick me into like, uh, you know, a drama class in school. That was kind of my first initial kind of entry into it, I guess. And at that age, you don't even know what you're doing. You're just having fun and all the kids are doing it and you're doing little school plays and um, that sort of thing. But it was, it was, it, it, there was, I remember there was a time, I was about 12 or something and uh, the school gave me this freedom that I was able to write my own play. And I remember that consisted of like Father Ted and the X-Files and um, <laughs> we just had great fun. And, and it was, a, I think it was a way to like, get out of class as well. So that was kind of cool. But um, I didn't really think much of it at that point. It wasn't until later on when I was dancing, um, I, I was a professional dancer. I did like hip hop and break dance and stuff like that. And that kind of led me in to doing a commercial or two or some choreography. Um, I think the first job I did that was like around cameras and everything was, was a commercial for like Scottish Gas or something like that. Um, <laughs> and then there was, I was hired as a choreographer for a film called The Honeymooners that shot in Ireland with Mike Epps and Cedric the Entertainer. And it was a remake of an older film. And that kind of was my first time on a on a sound stage. And I was just intrigued by it all. Um, then a bit of time went by. And I was deciding then, did I want to take it seriously? And if I did, where would I go? I had no idea about the industry whatsoever or where to go. I didn't have anyone around me you know, to get advice from or, or anything like that. So, it, and this was before, you know, the internet was so accessible and all that information was out there. So you're kind of going, right, do I go to London? Do I go to Ireland or stay in Ireland? Do I go to New York or LA? And it's, I, I, at that point I came over um, to LA and, and, and I said I would audit some different like studios to study in and stuff like that. And I found an amazing coach by the name of Aaron Spicer, and as soon as he kind of infiltrated my headspace, I I was addicted to it, and then I kind of really worked for it, you know. Um, that's kind of the long-winded answer, I guess. Um, yeah, I think I think that's where like the addiction started. <laughs> Everyone has their own story, and that's that's you know if you play you know, football, it's kind of like, okay, we were playing football as kids and then we kind of gradually went on. But I think with acting, it's any form of artistry is your own journey, really. Yeah, yeah. But it always gets me as a question. Yeah. I think I'm stuck in LA for a while as well. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been here throughout um, the whole COVID um, a, a chapter in our lives I guess um, so yeah I've, I've been here and um, I don't feel that comfortable traveling for uh, for the next while unless I'm forced to um, yeah. for work or something like that but yeah directing is a, directing is, is is an interesting um, is an in, it, it, it differs obviously greatly from from um, from acting. Acting is is a very, in a sense, it's a very internal, singular um, thing that you're doing and, and part of the craft. Um, directing is a whole vision, and it's you know it's like conducting an orchestra nearly, um, but it's a long term kind of investment of time. Like as an actor, you're you're you have your character and. You know, the, the, hopefully you love your character, um, or else why do it? But um, I, th I think the commitment of time, I think, on, on directing is, is a whole different thing and, and controlling so many elements. But it definitely, um, what's interesting, like with Bad Sons and then the next project that I want to do, uh, The Quarry, what's interesting is you're creating a whole world there, you know, that, that is, is not something that you're gifted with as an actor. You know, everything's there. You go in on an acting job, the sets are built and, you know, every everything's there. The world is there. The script is there. Um, costume department, the hair and makeup, everything's there. 
Um, so you're just focusing on your character and working as hard as you can for that and to serve the story and serve the director. Whereas, yeah, you know, I, I have a, a lot of respect for directors after dabbling. Um, but I want to go, I want to push it further and, 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 and kind of commit to that now as well. Not that I'll pull back from acting, but I just, I, I want to mm -hmm. kind of put my focus and energy into that. I definitely enjoy creating the worlds. That's for sure. Thank everyone who supported that. That what you guys did was absolutely amazing. Um, <laughs> it was really, really incredible. It just, it, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Um, she, she's been doing really well. Um, she, I think she pulled a little muscle down the park um, on the same leg. I think it's a little bit weaker, but generally she's had like a hundred percent recovery on it. Um, yeah. I mean, from going up the mountain, um, I had an audition and I was like, I'll go up the mountain, learn my lines and, you know, bring the dog for a walk as I always do. And then, um, yeah, it was just, she was running past a little branch and then it degloved her. So it just took all of us. <sighs> Uh, you you guys saw the um, the mm -hmm. aftermath. Mm -hmm. This yeah. this girl uh, thankfully helped me, and um, she drove me to the vet, and I had to say goodbye to her. They were like, "We don't think mm -hmm. she's gonna make it." So all of a sudden, I'm walking down the road with, you know, my sides for the script for the audition with blood all over them, and then her leash and collar in my hand, going, "What the?" You know, I just I just went. with animals. It, it it's it's crazy. You take your eye off them. You know, for a second, and and something. Go They're like, like kids. <laughs> yeah. What we've done is, um, we're going to do some film festivals first, um, mm -hmm. and put it out on the circuit. And I was saying that we have done a distribution deal with a company um, that will put it out um, in many different forms in the states. Um, Gunpowder and Sky are called. So they go out on Roku and um different mm -hmm. mediums so it'll be very accessible but we just want to get through the initial stage of the festival circuit it's 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 doing something i love and then staying committed and still being that? still being engaged and loving what i do on a day-to-day -day basis rather than fall out with it i, th I think that's uh, for me i you know, I'm motivated on the, the highest level when I'm doing something that I really care about. And um, for me, that's, that's storytelling. And, and I think once I'm able to keep that up and, and keep working as well, um, and telling good stories. And, 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 and I think for me right now, that, that's, that's, probably, that's probably where I'm at with that. You know, I, I, I think the journey as we always talk about in life it's you don't even realize when you're doing it but that's part of it you know so it, you go and do you know whether it's a film or a tv show or something like that and it's only when you look back going oh that's part of my journey and then you have a resume and you know it just that hangs on to you and becomes a part of you so i think to continue that you know and and continue affecting people and you know challenging myself in in many ways with it um because i you know you you you, we all kind of, um, we grow, we change, our, our, our experiences change emotionally. So each time, each, each time, I think when you're connected, you know, you, you need to be connected to your own life and your own emotions as an actor. And I think, you know, as, as we kind of see that, you, you, you're able to bring different, like, pockets of emotion into your performances. And that's where I'm interested to see where it goes with just, um, you know, on, on just a larger depth. Of what I'm able to bring, I think. Oh, what was um, your greatest accomplishment as an actor? Um, in terms of like, I I I think Copper was a very special show. Yes. For so many reasons, Copper was was such a special show. Um, one because it was at the beginning of my working career in film and tv so it's kind of like okay this is you know i can do this and i did like a show in ireland and a movie and a few other bits and pieces and then um to have that sort of validation from the likes of barry levinson and tom fontana and christine wayne was just like okay this is this is happening you know we're 
starting this journey and then you know just what just the world that they built the scripts the quality of the people the material like it was it was insane like i've sons of liberty was was pretty phenomenal in the sets that they had and everything like that but copper was just it was a whole world that they built like the sound stage that we had had streets it was a it was new york city you know back in mm -hmm. the 1800s we had a farm on set and and there was just so many beautiful memories there is you know from from that production and then um, i feel like um it definitely should have went another season or two I yes think. i think it wasn't really fair on the audience you know um and the fans of the show to to end it on that got better it got, better it got it was getting better. better season two i yeah, think was, was better so than good. season one i think everyone was finding their yeah. feet and uh mm -hmm. you know they they were able to bring some great characters in like donald log and, and and others and yes yeah it went out on a on a really bad cliffhanger to <laughs> to not have a renewal on you know yeah. but, who, uh, who died and who lived it was terrible i was screaming at the tv no yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think I think there was a lot of upset people um, in the cast and crew and and the fans when um, when when it was cancelled. You know, I think mm -hmm. you know people ask me that all the time. They're like, "Why was it cancelled?" And it's just like I think timing is 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 a lot of it. And I think um, you know we were coming in at a very strange time, and BBC America was just trying to build, and the show was quite a, a elaborate and expensive. Um, and then they had Ripper Street to compete with, which was a much lower mm -hmm. budget. So I think ultimately it was just a bit of a weird time. Um, but it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, it's, there was a massive uh, push from the fans. And I think that might have been more effective um, in today's, uh, you know, in today, basically, today, what's going on today in the industry. Have you ever been in that position? I, I'm always in that position. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, no. A, that's a very common thing for actors. Um, like I just read the other day that John Travolta was offered the role uh, Tom Hanks took in Forrest Gump. And it was like, oh mm. no. Yeah. Couldn't imagine him doing that role either. Yeah. There's, look, yeah. Scripts, come, scripts come up and these roles come up. And you usually in the industry, there's a lot of hype yeah. around the roles. So you'll... Uh, They'll be, people will be talking about it, your agents and your manager and, you know, actor, actor friends will, you know, there's, a, there's always an energy around the script or else you read it and you're just like, whoa, this is good. I need to, you know, I need to really push on this one. Um, and some you get and some you don't, but it's, it's I, I, I think it's hard to kind of switch off, but that's, I, as an actor, I think it's a foolish trait to hold back and, say oh I should have got that role or I could have got that role or I was up for that role because it's it's just so common you know and there's so many factors um of of of, of it going in a different direction you know um but I'm kind of ranting I forget the question even yeah. <laughs> you have to remember for each role there's there, there could be thousands of people up for for each role yeah. you know? yeah. mm -hmm. so when you get the right look when you get the right cast in that's 99% of your work done there it's if you if something is miscast yeah. that's yeah. that's a whole different story you know um and that can really really affect the show and the flow of it mm. so you know it's it's a give and take i guess yeah even if you're playing a bad guy you can some you can always generally find a way to justify their actions Hmm. That guy, I couldn't. That guy, I, yeah, I, yeah. and that was difficult. I didn't feel good playing that. Um, I committed the same way I would to any other character. But that was the one character. That's a really great question. But that that's um, the one character where I was like, I just felt gross. I felt I felt terrible after playing that. Mm -hmm. um, because as well, there's no story uh, arc to anything about it. It was just it's wrong, you know, and and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with McGuire, for instance, he was a ruthless killer, you know, thief, like, did his, he was a little pirate, and, and, and he was written on the page as being a bad guy, but because you justify his actions, 
and then you play him in a certain way, it's, it's like, okay, he's a bad guy, but I kind of like it. But that guy, nah. <laughs> think is to work as much as you can um i think put yourself in a position where you can work as much as you can um for me i, I would do jobs for free and i would just explore so many aspects of production um find what you like you know in filmmaking is it being a director of photography is it being a director is it being an actor you know it's it's what area of filmmaking and explore everything before you lock on to something you know um, because each one is such a craft you know every 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 department on a on a film set is 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 a massive like life dedication so you might as well do something you like um, and try and get around try and get on productions that you are learning from people that have experience you know and if you're doing college courses you know, try and try and get in a good college. And I think more than anything, I think go out and make a movie, you know, whether it's just on a small camera with no budget, shoot it on your iPhone, just try and make a movie, make something um, and just dabble in it. Yeah. But that's, I think like making a movie is more important than college. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you learn firsthand and especially if you're around good people and you can get on sets and I, I think you, you really get, the education um, in filmmaking from actually doing it. Um, you can give all the theory you want, but practicality is, is a different thing. I remember, I remember years oh, ago, I went in to play a, a, a white rapper. And <laughs> I don't rap, I don't, you know what I mean? I like rap music, but I don't fucking rap. <laughs> so, <it's> like, <laughs> so I went in and did it. And, um, they told me, they kind of looked at me afterwards and, and took a moment and, you know, that, and I was like, was it that good that they're silenced? But I don't think it was. <laughs> they were like, okay, thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> and, <it was> like, <laughs> and then I had people call me saying, how did it go? I was like, yeah, I think it went well. And then it was just like, <laughs> we're absolutely not using him. But <laughs> definitely, um, that was definitely a, a crazy one, you know. <laughs> I, it, it, that, that's been in my mind for the last maybe five years um, and I've kind of put my energy more towards um, developing a TV show, an Irish TV show and then um, uh, an Irish film as well um, which I've been writing the whole time during COVID. Um, I sort of, the master plan was to do Bad Sons and then go and do the next film which is The Quarry. Um, and at some point I would, I would, I would love to write a book and I'd probably use a lot of, you know, go into a lot of stories from childhood and stuff like that. Um, but it's, uh, right now it's just focus on, on, you know, writing good scripts and, and sort of building worlds, you know, I guess. Yeah. That's cool. How it blow, it, it blows. It, 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 blow, it, it continues to blow my mind, and it blew my mind uh, to get that support. Um, I couldn't believe it. it. It was. It was just. Yeah, it was a very emotional time, um, not just because of what happened to Copper, but just the support I was receiving and everyone that gave me that support. I just absolutely thank you guys. Um, like, it's, it's still even thinking about it now. Like, it hits because it was just such an incredible. Um, incredible thing to uh, to witness and, and and to have happen um and it's just it it just shows what in numbers the support people can give each other you know so i, I think ultimately it it really changed my perspective of those <laughs> funding pages or whatever it is it's it's it, it's like wow it, it the little bit does help and it all does affect people you know just a kind gesture and again thank you guys it's incredible and Thank God she's here with me now, you know, and doing so well. <laughs> I think with Ireland, I, would, LA. I, I, I I love LA for so many reasons, um, <laughs> but I also love Ireland. My family are in Ireland uh, and I want to do more work there. So I definitely want to spend more time in Ireland, um, but I don't want to go back there and just sit around. If I'm going back, excuse me, I want to go back and work um, yeah. as well, you know.
and yeah. I can be a lot more productive in the industry out here I feel than I can back home right now and I mean right now I'm stuck anyway with COVID um, yeah. I, I mean I definitely will be spending more time in Ireland we're also going to do uh, potentially um, you know we're leaning towards maybe doing another series or another season on the Southwest Westerlies so mm. we're kind of looking at that aspect as well mm. yeah you know. It's yeah. looking like it, we're headed in the right direction for a second season. I would love to do a second season. Um, the cast and crew were phenomenal on it. I think the storyline is very, uh, you know, relevant to today's terms um, of the environmental aspect of it. Um, I think there's a lot of important information in that show. And the characters are fun and cool. And it was nice being back in Ireland. So um, yeah. I, think that's, I think that comes out, you know, over the next few months. Um, I'm sure they'll start advertising it soon, so it'll be interesting how, to see what people think of it, you know? How long were you in um, hair and makeup for that? Because that looked like some serious <laughs> shellacking that you took to get your hair little. <laughs> I, 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 I would go into my chair and fall asleep <laughs> and then wake up and it would be done. Um, <laughs> so it was, I, I, I think the hair was pretty quick. The hair was only 10 or 15 minutes. Really? Um, makeup was light, thank God. There was no... There was no scars or tattoos or anything like that. So cool. <laughs> that was a pretty quick, uh, pretty quick turnaround. The the only problem was it was very windy where we were shooting and rainy. Mm -hmm. So every time you would leave the hair and makeup trainer, it's just like, oh, it's gone. So it's just like <laughs> sticks it on. Set like... <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on and for all the wonderful questions. I'm going to try out this pizza thing. <laughs> let's uh, let's all do it again sometime soon. <laughs> that lamb. I, I had a plot. I I, I plotted to uh, to break into his house during COVID and steal the lamb and leave a ransom note. <laughs>